Hey guys, what's up? Josh Maddy here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to my channel. Anyway, oh, um, randomly people will ask me on like other avenues what I'm listening to and I, I don't know. I'll just tell you guys now. So I'm listening to this thing. It is called uh, Lo-Fi Lo Chill Hop Study Beats. <laughs> it's one of my doctor friends on Instagram. But um, yeah, so I'm listening to that now. It kind of keeps me calm. There's someone at the front door. Uh, it keeps me chill. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the news right now. I use my YouTube as kind of like a video diary. So I'm just putting this in here so I can tell Future Josh what's up. Also, I just did my hair. Hashtag ADD. I just did my hair last night. It's supposed to be green with blue, like the ocean. Um, and I cut it... Um, Part, part of that decision was made because of the COVID-19 stuff. Um, the other part is I was looking like I had an octopus on my head and not in a cute way. <laughs> but actually, Aaron cut my hair because uh, we learned how to do each other's hair before, before we had money. So it's just like, fine, we remember how to do it. Mm, I'm drinking peppermint tea. It's traditional medicinal. Medicinals. It says, friendship is a sheltering tree. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Anyway, that's for my stomach later tonight because I gotta go to work tonight. Um, I randomly woke up really early, so I need to take a nap here in a minute. But anyway, um, so I'm just gonna talk really quick about what's going on in my life, what's going on in the world, like everything all stupid. So, like I said, I cut my hair because of this whole COVID-19. I've had four patients now with COVID-19. Um, one of them was a strain that everyone was like not concerned about, but now there's new studies saying that the strain can actually cause COVID-19 to happen. Oh, those blasted spiky little viruses. Um, anyway, so obviously knock wood, I'm fine. It takes a couple days for it to show up, but I've already been like three weeks ago with that patient. I've also been taking a lot of ED shifts, uh, mainly because one, I'm uh, young and pretty much healthy. My husband is young and very healthy and we don't have a child, she's a dog. So I thought I would follow my sword for some of the girls that have to be in the ED, like with their kids being stuck at home now, because here in New Mexico, everyone's off school until the end of semester, which I think is the summertime. So they're off school at home doing online school, which I think is how it really should be. But, I don't know, everyone's starting to freak out because it's like, oh no, now I have to be around my kids all day. So, ugh. But at least you're in charge of your own education now and you have to see what the teachers have to deal with. Anyway, so that's happening. So, I picked up a few of the ED shifts. It's been, like, really crazy. Um, it was, like, super packed, swamped. Like, some of the ED people were getting forced to, like, do mandatory overtime to do the nasal swabs and to be navigators and, like, tell people where to go and what to do. So, it was, like, really cool in that sense because they were getting the opportunity to, like, do things. Um, but at the same time that it left us having to, like, backfill all the holes that were in there, which is fine. That's what we really should be doing. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of that. On That was... Like, we were required to do three through the year, so I did six. Just trying to help out. Speaking of the year, so I'm on my last semester of my bachelor's degree for nursing, and I'm really excited because this class is really um, straightforward, and it seems really fun. I've had this teacher before, and I know exactly what she looks for from us, so we'll see about that. I, I'm actually going to do my project on nurses, like, not burning out, because right now I feel like we are burning out and last semester I felt like we were burning out like we're just burning out all the time and not just nurses but healthcare professionals like we're not the only ones out there doing things like the, the maids or housekeeping people like they're the ones having to clean this stuff and this stuff can live on I don't know so there's more than just nurses and doctors and stuff but at the same time we're the ones that if there's a COVID person, like a COVID-19 on, on a unit, there's one nurse and one nurse for 12 hours. You do everything. You do vitals. You do all the tasks that normally you would be able to delegate. You do everything. I'm sure they can even have you do your phlebotomy because we're all phlebotomy. We can all do phlebotomy. It's fine. Or at least I try to do mine and get my text to like learn how to do it because it's within their scope. It's just a lot of stuff going on right now. First, I wasn't really nervous about it. I wasn't scared about it. I was just like, oh, this is stupid. It's just viral pneumonia. And then it turned into this thing, well, oh my god, okay, well, why are the young people getting sick? Because then usually we're good in like a couple days and we're good. And then it's like, oh, there's like young as in 30 getting sick too. Hmm, I wonder what's actually happening here. Because I feel like no one really knew and we we're all just like flying by the seat of our pants. Like every day is a new update. Every day something new is happening and no one really knows what's happening. So we're all just okay. So like my first COVID, I had a duck mask. 
they didn't even have anything for our hair, anything for our shoes. We had gloves and a gown. And I was like, okay, and they're like trying to transfer her to one of the rooms that's negative pressured, like to suck the air out. And no one knew how to transport her. And I was just like, hey, put her, put her duckbill mask, throw a yellow gown on her so everyone knows she's sick. Because there's this thing where it's like we're not supposed to do that because we don't want anyone to feel like they're being discriminated against. But I was like, you know what, I'll take the hit for that. Like, that's fine. Come find me. I'll talk to whoever about it. We need to make sure that people don't... People are aware of what's going on right now because you never know. So I'm always good with my universal precautions and stuff like that. So speaking of universal precautions, I've been making masks for that million mask challenge and I'm dropping them off at Joann's. So I made a couple of those masks, dropped them off. I made some for me, one for me, one for Aaron. I made them out of denim because I thought that the density would be a lot better but they're kind of hard to breathe in so i took one into work and they're like you can't wear that mask no 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 no. and i was like you know what fine that's fine but if you guys run out of masks and you won't provide me a mask i'm not going to put myself in danger for you guys it is just not worth my time or my health or my life and they're just like well we'll keep masks for you and i'm like you know what it's not even about that you can't be telling me what to do and then not being able to offer me anything you know what I mean? You can't be like, no, you can't do that. Here's what we have in place for you. F that. Because in like Chicago and New York, like the big cities, they're fully gowned up. They got face shields, masks, eyewear, fucking boot hair bouffants, um, shoe booties, like the whole thing. And we're just like a surgical mask. Oh no, honey. There's way too many people in this state with way too many old people because it's a retirement state. We will get flooded and there will be nobody to take care of anybody. It's not even cute like there's no way around it in all reality something bad will happen and then we're not going to be able to do anything so it was just like very interesting to me um how they were trying to like get me to do that and now everyone's like throwing their clothes and trash bags like their scrubs and all this stuff and i'm like oh my god okay i guess we're supposed to be doing that because like we asked the charge that was doing it and they didn't tell us anything and i was like so I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna take in like cute clothes to walk into work with and then walk out with the same cute clothes but keep it under my scrubs maybe. Um, because I'm pretty good at my universal precautions and keeping myself clean, but you never know. Like I've seen I've seen nurses change people's diapers with no gloves and their hair was getting all into it and it was flicking all over their back and they had like shit all over their back. And I'm like and you can't tell them anything because they've been a nurse for like 10 years and this is the way it's always been done. Like, no, it's not. That's disgusting. You're nasty. But anyway, so long story short, I'm going to try something out tonight at work. COVID is like real. There's been a few scares where the doctors weren't going in the rooms. They were just like this. And the nurse is in there like doing stuff. And then we touch three other people who are touched by two or three other people. So like with the way COVID is spread and everything, like it's like super, super... I forgot the word, but it's super contagious. So, I don't know, that's shitty on the doctor's part. I'm not saying anything. Well, we're not sure if they have it. Oh, they actually do. Oh my, what do we do? Oh no. Like, come on, dude. It was interesting though, because the other night I was um, working and I saw one of the docs for that was covering and it was a teacher, it was faculty. And I was just like, oh, shit's real. So I was like very cognizant of everything I was doing and I was like, I have this patient, they look like they're spiraling, I just wanna let you know because I need to do this and nothing. I'm like, can I get an EKG? Nothing, so I just started doing things. And I think that's part of like what we should be doing as nurses, we should be supporting our docs because they're, or our providers, um, because they're like doing stuff too, like they're probably doing all these code situations, respiratory, losing their airways, like there's all kinds of dumb stuff we have to think about. I try not to because that's not my pay scale, like that's doctor shit. But right now where there's like faculty helping out, because they've been asking people, please come in and help. Um, I'm okay. I need to put on my big boy panties and like help out like an actual good nurse. So I've been doing that, I just... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Some nurses don't even watch for anything. They just wait for stuff to happen and then have emergencies at like 2 in the morning. And it's like, why'd you give them so much insulin, honey? They've been NPO since like yesterday. Just because it's ordered doesn't mean you have to give it. That's part of your clinical judgment, fool. 
not everyone thinks like that. I, I went to this really interesting class because I like being educated and it was about uh, reactionary nursing versus predictive nursing. So the reactionary nurses are the ones that end up just like having, I feel like, cortisol bodies. They look like my dog who's a pug. They end up looking like that because they have so much stress built up because they never know what's about to happen. Whereas the predictive nurses figure like, okay, so based on my previous experience, my clinical judgment, my evidence-based practice, in the past this has happened because of this. So this is what I'm expecting to happen. And that's very much me. I'm like, okay, so this is what I think is gonna happen. This is what's happened in the past. Seems like it's gonna be right. Let's go down that path. So then I start watching out for things and nine times out of 10, I can catch stuff. It's the ones where I'm like, I get handed a a flaming bag of poop and I'm like this 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 is what you give me like oh I survived my shift I'm out and I'm just like why are you this way who taught oh, I don't know whatever everyone can be a nurse that any way they want I'm just trying to like make it so like we don't all like burn out anyway that tangent happened um, but yeah, so life is weird in the nursing world. School world is cool. I need to do like an assignment tonight. If I get a chance, I don't know. It's been very busy. Partially, I cut this because they said that COVID can live on stuff for like 19 days. And I have curly hair, so I wash my hair like every three days. I condition it every day and water and stuff like that, but I don't actually lather up and wash it except for every three days because then my hair will just get super frizzy and dry. So I'm just like, eh. So that's happening. So I cut my hair. I guess they want boys to shave their beard so it would fit under a COVID mask, which I think is where it should be. I don't think boys should have facial hair inside of a hospital. That's gross. At the same time, I have all kinds of BB cream on, CC cream, because I've been doing these masks from The Ordinary. It's like this red uh, peeling mask, and it's been doing pretty good. It's like searing away my skin. Um, but I, I feel like you really shouldn't have a beard working in healthcare, that's gross. Like all this stuff we get on, and we could take off a mask, but you can't take off your beard. You have to like wash it. And I don't ever see anyone washing their beard. Like I wash my face every night when I'm at work. I'm just like, ew, cause it's like gross and slimy. But I don't know. So that's happening. Aaron is actually working from home indefinitely. They don't know when they're gonna open up that, his building that he works at. And like he works at a very prominent company. So I'm just like, uh, and all his friends are like facetiming him through the computer at work his, his work friends and they're just like so we're at home again <laughs> so it's just like it's a lot um everything's just a lot it's a lot so i'm gonna actually stop here because it's almost 15 minutes i'll start doing these once a month not for you guys you can watch if you want but it's more for me so i can have a video diary of what was happening at this time of my life because I, I tend to go back and look and see like Oh, remember when I thought I was struggling at Golden Corral and my feet hurt? Oh, honey. Oh, honey, at least no one shot at me. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you guys so very much. Don't forget to keep your head up. Go outside, get some vitamin D. <laughs> and I don't know, live your life, eat healthy. Right now we have no excuse. All we have is time, the people that are stuck at home. So I love you guys. Be careful. Take care of each other. Annyeong.